Intervals are a fundamental part of music, as they are the building blocks that form all melodies and if layered on top of one another, also form harmonies and chords, and therefore a solid understanding of intervals is essential in understanding how music works. An interval is the distance in pitch between two notes. To better understand this, let's use our low E string as an example. If we played our low E string, the smallest interval available to us would be the distance between the open E string and the F note on the first fret, followed by the second fret, then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way up to the E on the twelfth fret. In total, this gives us twelve possible intervals, each with their own unique quality or sound, and it doesn't matter what note you choose to play on the fretboard, if you follow that note with another note, or at the same time as another note, then you have just played one of the previously mentioned intervals. The best way to learn the names of the intervals on guitar is through using the major scale. Let's play a major scale starting on the third fret of the low E string, which would give us a G note. Therefore, we would call this a G major scale. Now let's assign a number to each of the notes in the scale. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Although this note is the same as our 1, as it is also a G note just an octave higher, so I'm going to call this 1 also. Now let's compare each note of the scale to the 1. You could also call this the tonic, but for simplicity's sake, let's stick with 1. We would call the distance between the first and second note a major second, the distance between the first and third a major third, the first and fourth would be a perfect fourth, the first and fifth a perfect fifth, the first and sixth would be a major sixth, the first and seventh a major seventh, and the first and last note, as they are the same note an octave apart, we would call an octave. This gives us seven of our twelve intervals. The remaining five intervals can be found by looking at the gaps between our major scale notes. For example, if we lowered our major second, we would have a minor second, or flat second. Our major third would become a minor third, or flat third. Our perfect fourth would become an augmented fourth if raised up. However, if we lowered our perfect fifth, it would be called a diminished fifth. You could also call this interval a tritone, or flat five, which we'll stick with for simplicity. Our major sixth would become a minor sixth, or flat six, and our seventh would become a minor seventh, or flat seven. Alternatively, you could lay it out all on one string, and it would look like this. You will be able to use intervals to understand how chords are made and how to build them yourself. Also how to construct more meaningful solos. Intervals will also help you communicate with other musicians more effectively and understand and take on bigger theory concepts. All of these topics I will cover in future lessons. However, arguably, the biggest benefit to learning intervals is developing your ear and achieving relative pitch, which will allow you to both transfer the ideas you hear in your head to the fretboard and also to transcribe songs by ear without the need for tabs or sheet music. This will be the topic of the next lesson. So if this is of interest to you, then feel free to like and subscribe below. See you in the next one.